Hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm really happy to have you here. I'm glad we were all able to get through the buffet line quickly so that we can focus on Chef Jeff. I'm so excited to hear from him. Um, I am a philosophy professor here at Lindenwood University, and I run a center called the Liberty and Ethics Center, which is a part of a bigger organization called the Hammond Institute for Free Enterprise. And the Hammond Institute wants to promote um, the system of free enterprise and voluntary uh, cooperation in society. And one of our biggest areas of interest is criminal justice reform. I'm going to talk about that a little later when we transition to the evening panel. Um, but this is actually our second annual uh, conference on criminal justice reform and uh, also co-hosted with St. Louis Community College's uh, criminal justice department from Florence Valley, headed by Wesley Bell. We've done this together both times. So it's really a great partnership, and uh, there's more people to thank, but that will come later. One of the things that I wanted to point out is the title that we continue to use from the last time we met to this time, and it's Left, Right, and Center, okay, right? So in 2015, we said Left, Right, and Center coming together to reform Missouri's criminal justice system, and this time it's Left, Right, and Center coming together to support reentry and entrepreneurship. And the idea is that there are things we can all get on board with. There's some, some systems that are so bad, we can all agree they need to be fixed. Uh, we can certainly say that about the mass incarceration crisis, that's for sure. Um, and there are some dreams that are so praiseworthy that we can all get together to support them. And that's really what we're talking about tonight. Um, I'll just point out to you that you know, Wesley, who was just up here, is a, a Democratic Councilman from the city of Ferguson. Um, the person coming up next, Tim Jones, is the former Republican Speaker of the House, uh, Missouri House of Representatives, and he's from Eureka. And I'm a Libertarian from all of that. So, <laughs> so we've got it all. Uh, and we really agree on this stuff. So let's work together. That's my idea. We had a uh, symposium a few years ago here with Ralph Nader and Grover Norquist, if you know who those two people are. And they were on the same side. It was a, it was a, a on cronyism. And it was so, and Ralph Nader said something I never forgot. He said, you know, even if we have different reasons to achieve a certain goal, if we have the same goal, and it's a good goal, we have a moral imperative to work together to achieve that goal. And that's the idea of the left, right, and center conferences. So I'm very excited to introduce to you Tim Jones, former Speaker of the House of Representatives. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Tim Jones, and yes, I am the crazy conservative in this cabal. <laughs> so uh, I want to tell you a little bit about you know why I'm, why I'm here, why I continue to support the Eminence too. Well, when I was transitioning out of uh, elected uh, public life, and my wife asked me, well, what are you going to do now that you have to grow up? Uh, I was looking to do a lot of different things and remain closely connected to the political world and help out my future colleagues. Uh, but I also wanted to continue service. And so uh, my current day job, where um, you, you may see or hear me sometimes, I work with a company called First Rule, which is a media network uh, here in St. Louis. And one of the products we produce every day is the Almond Report on ABC 30. And uh, Jamie Allman is also a big supporter of what we do here. He is uh, he's someone that reaches audiences across a wide, diverse spectrum. He also is a big fan of criminal justice reform and you know, getting reducing the barriers that government throws up to all of us, no matter where we are on the political spectrum. And so uh, I met a lot of uh, uh, friends here at Lindenwood, uh, who are now very good friends, Dr. Howard Wall and Rachel were the first two I met. And uh, they asked me if I'd like to to join them at the, uh, the Hammond Institute. And I said, great, how much does that pay? And they said, well, you're gonna do that for free. So, <laughs> so this is my continued pro bono work as a recovering attorney as well. So, so I appear regularly on the Almond Report on ABC 30, also on FM News Talk 97.1. I'm a frequent substitute host for all, the, for all the radio talk show hosts, from Jamie Almond to Dave Glover, to Dr. Randy Tobler, to Mark Cox. And so I do a lot of work in the media world and in the communication world. Uh, basically, I, I'm, I'm, I refer to myself as a professional storyteller these days. So, one story I'd like to tell you uh, is about Chef Jeff, Jeff Henderson here in just a second. But to tell you why 
I think these types of forums are important. And I'm so glad to see the room nearly full. This is exciting. A lot of things you could probably be doing on a, on a cold Thursday evening in St. Louis, like being at home watching TV. Uh, instead, you're here. You're spending your time here. And to say, to say that our society is polarized right now is probably an understatement. And I think, it, I think the perception is maybe a little worse than the reality. Because across our country, uh, in our state legislatures, on our university campuses, despite what you see um, some nights literally blowing up on television, there's a lot of reasonable, conciliatory, constructive dialogue going, in, going on between people of all different political stripes and persuasions and of all different ideologies. And the Hammond Institute is one of those vehicles that is really helping, I think, advance a lot of important issues, uh, not only here in St. Charles, but in the entire region, and I dare say the state of Missouri. We have uh, several people among us who are currently serving in the state legislature. We have people who lobby in the state legislature and do a lot of other things. So Jefferson City is listening here as well. And my hope, my dream, and I know that of Howard and Rachel's and everybody else at the Hammond Institute, is that this institute becomes a voice uh, that, is, that is bigger than any of us as individuals and becomes a voice that is heard across our state, perhaps even across our country someday, as a, as a think tank that is on the cutting edge of these issues. So why, why is criminal justice reform important? Uh, because it's something I really do feel the left, the right, and the center can agree on across the board. As I was terming out the legislature, this, was, this idea was just coming in vogue. Uh, it was something that many of my Democratic colleagues had been starting to talk about for a few years. But even amongst them, a lot of people in their party were a little afraid to bring up the subject. It was when uh, I first joined with one of my Democratic colleagues, former Senator Jeff Smith from St. Louis City, who has a remarkable story of his own to tell in this kind of arena, uh, that people started kind of looking up as a whole and going, you know, this is something that we can embrace in a bipartisan way. And one of the first things we did in Jefferson City uh, was to reform our criminal code. It hadn't been done in decades, mainly because people were afraid to touch it. And we had uh, a wide variety of legislators, lawmakers, former prosecuting attorneys, former public defenders, current people in all those areas come together. And we reformed the criminal code, I think for the better, to help out with a lot of the issues that were discussed today in Missouri for the first time in over 50 years. So that was one thing we did. From that, that has resulted in a lot of other initiatives and a lot of other efforts and a lot of other issues that now people are not afraid to talk about in your state capital and back home. So that leads us to our featured keynote speaker here tonight who has his own <coughs> remarkable story to tell. And there is a little mini bio here in your program that I'll refer to last because it sums up some really good bullet points. But let me pull some pieces from uh, his very long, interesting bio that I'll, I'll pull some sections from. It really is a remarkable story. California native Jeff Henderson, commonly and affectionately referred to as Chef Jeff, is the first African-American executive chef at the Bellagio. He's a well-known television personality, a sought-after speaker, so we're blessed to have him here tonight, and a New York Times best-selling author. He started his culinary career in 96, 1996, working for Chef Gadsby as a dishwasher. So he started off at the bottom. With his foot in the restaurant door, Chef Jeff was determined to make the most of this opportunity. He studied uh, his mentor and worked harder than anyone else. Under <laughs> Chef Gadsby's tutelage, Jeff soon moved from dishwasher to prep station to desserts. Uh, he focused on his job. He was always the first in, the last out. Whenever he got paid, he used his money to buy the latest tools and books to improve his craft. He worked his way up through the world of fine dining. He was, uh, did, he was a sous chef at the Coronado Island Marriott, chef turnout and banquet chef at LA, at LA Hotels Bel Air. Hearing about the booming restaurant scene in Las Vegas, he headed there and sought an opportunity to work at one of the top hotels on the Strip. He was eventually hired by Caesars. He became the first African-American chef de cuisine to run restaurants at the hotel. In 2001, the American Tasting Institute named him Las Vegas Chef of the Year. He took advantage of that exposure, started a catering company, and then he uh, returned to Las Vegas where he worked as, a, as the executive chef at the Bellagio. In 2007, he began his writing career 
And Harper Collins published his memoir called Cooked, which landed him on Oprah, where he won a new car. <laughs> shortly, shortly after the show aired, Sony Pictures bought uh, the life rights to his story. At the end of the book tour, things really began to take off, which led him to leave his post at the Bellagio and do private chef work consulting and public speaking. That same year, he launched a new reality show on the Food Network, The Chef Jeff Project, which followed Jeff as he, as he brought a group of disadvantaged young adults to work for his private dining company to teach him cooking and life skills. One of the things I find commonly in people that have redemption stories like Chef Jeff is they never forget where they came from. And then they always turn back around and try to pay that gift forward, which he's obviously doing. He shares his knowledge and excitement for food through his many cooking shows and cookbooks, uh, in 2009, he published his first cookbook, Chef Jeff Cooks. In 2011, he released his second one called America, America I Am, Pass It Down Cookbook, a collection of recipes that have been passed down to preserve African-American food legacy. 2013, he released his first self-help book, If You Can See It, You Can Be It. And in 2012, uh, Jeff's first cooking show, Beat the Chefs, premiered, followed by Family Style with Chef Jeff. He's currently the host of Flip My Food, and Family Style, which airs on the Z Living Network. As I mentioned, uh, he's been featured uh, on Oprah, Good Morning America, The Today Show, CNN, ABC World News Tonight. He's been in several major publications, USA Today, People Magazine, New York Times, Newsweek, and Washington Post. Uh, he lives in Vegas still with his wife and their five children. Woo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One for the kids. Uh, and what I want to wrap up is, is by saying why, why he's here tonight, and that's in your little program. Chef Jeff uses his journey from drug dealer to celebrity chef to help others transform their lives and their dreams. He has a simple message for everyone he meets. I'm living the American dream, so can you. Without further ado, Chef Jeff.